Well, this is K4ATZ, and today I would like to speak to you about a subject called QRM. Now, the Q signals are or ha were developed for uh, basically for Morse code to be able to tell you what's going on in a three-letter designation. Okay, so um, if you're talking to somebody on Morse code or even voice now, and you say QSL, uh, QSL actually has dual meaning, and QSL can be that um, a QSL, which means I copy you, or um, QSL as in sending a QSL card. I don't have one right in front of me, but um, anyways, it's a postcard that has your call sign and your address and your information of what uh, time you spoke to the station, um, what kind of radio you have, and um, date, of course, and that kind of thing, and how many watts, and all that. So um, then there's the uh, QSL designation of QSO, and QSO is um, uh, conversation so you say thanks for the QSO or in Morse code you go TNX FER F-E-R QSO and, and these are abbreviations that actually were developed to again shorten the time frame that you were um, sending Morse code or receiving Morse code um, and a, a lot of the abbreviations um, have migrated into cell phone so TNX uh, for example it, 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 pretty much everybody knows is thanks and that um, has stood the test of time and now is into modern day um, texting when actually it started in Morse code and a lot of people don't realize this so the Morse code was kind of the precursor to texting um, now QRM is really what I, I wanted to talk about. There's a lot of Q signals. QSY means change frequency. QSB means your signal's fading. Um, QRZ means uh, anybody out there, or ba basically uh, like uh, kind of like a CQ. But QRM is interesting because QRM can be from two origins. Well, it can be from a lot of origins, but two main origins. It can be uh, natural QRM, which is QRM from band noise or the frequency noise or um, just terrible conditions or cues will, will cause QRM. But number two, I want to talk about. I've been a ham for over 40 years. And I'm sure I've created my share of QRM unintentionally. But I have to say, when there's an amateur radio net going on, and you hams know what I'm talking about, if you're not ham watching this, a net is a specific time uh, frequency um, that hams get together to check in, and there could be tens um, and it could be hundreds at any given time. For example, an organization called South Cars, uh, um, Southern Operator, um, well, whatever it stands for anyways, it's, it's an organization basically on 7.251 megahertz every morning from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m which you can log on and you can have a conversation that is very short there's a control operator handling it um, he'll call for any check-ins sometimes he'll start with people who have birthdays or sometimes he'll say uh, QR, uh P, which means low power rigs which um, I have a KX3 uh, so therefore uh, the, K the Alicraft KX3 is a small radio it's ultra portable and it is QRP um, you can't go up to 12 watts, which technically isn't, but um, 5 watts 
I would qualify as QRP and, and it's quite fantastic because when I first got it it was frustrating but um, uh, everybody likes high power and you can push down the mic or the CW and everybody hears you but to be able to have be a skilled QRP operator is really amazing but, but back to my point especially on these nets you'll hear and, and the net's about to go in one minute so you'll probably hear a lot in the beginning um, one of my pet peeves is these people with um, radios that do not have automatic antenna tuners um, or the old radios where you had to manually tune the radio to the frequency for best results, maximum power output um, if you have tube radio you dip the plate and do the grid and all that stuff which if you know what I'm talking about you do if you don't I'm not going to explain it and I can't explain it so when they when you tune up your radio it creates a CW carrier in other words or it is the most annoying thing you know for a second or two okay but when it goes on for a minute two minutes three minutes your 30 seconds it is annoying as hell and not only is it annoying as hell but when you're doing it on the operating frequency it is rude and there's a term that amateurs have for each other that do that and it's called a lid and it basically stands for a lousy ham operator a lousy amateur radio station so all you lids out there that love to tune up right on frequency stop it's annoying and you know nowadays they have digital triangulation they're gonna figure out exactly where you're coming from and they're gonna nail you because that that that's malicious interference on a station or stations so find a clear frequency um, even you know if you're not tuned up maybe call QRZ which means you know is a fr or say is this frequency in use and then tune up there go at least five kilohertz up or down just get away from the operating frequency you know sometimes I'll be sitting here I have my my radio at the kitchen table and you know it's kind of in the background See? And, and even though it's turned down, you know, kind of hear what's going on. You pick what you want to listen to or not, or when you want to check in when they call for check ins. But that tone will come through even at a low volume. And even my wife will go, What? It, you know, what is that noise? And I explain it to her. She knows now, and she knows it's rude. And she'll say, Listen to how rude that person is. So, one of the things amateur radio has been good about is self policing. So, you know, self police yourself, control yourself. And if you're doing this in the evening after you had a couple beers, don't. Just don't do it. It's rude. It is the most inconsiderate, most immature. And if you don't know that you're putting out a carrier when you're tuning it up, you are. And you're interfering and causing QRM all over the place. So. See, so the, the, the net's starting up. In a few minutes, you'll hear these people, you know, they, they'll, they'll wake up and, you know, maybe they weren't on this frequency and they got on these old tube radios or, or, or they feel like they got to run 10 gazillion watts. And they'll start tuning up. I just, I don't understand it. I never have and I never will. So please stop doing it. And I, I don't know what I'm going to title this, but lid will be in there somewhere. And, and I just, I don't understand it. And I just don't know why you're so lazy. And, you know, if you tune up 5 kilohertz up or down, or 10 kilohertz, you don't have to retune every time you turn the knob 5 kc. It's, you just don't have to do it. And, see, I heard one in the background already. You'll hear it. We'll, we'll leave it on in a second while I talk. 
That's a... I'm writing down these hand fast and um, that'll be fun to go to, but um, just, trust me, I don't, I don't want to take up a lot of the YouTube time because boy, you don't want to listen to the net, but when you hear that, that tone coming through, it's amazing. And, and you know, everybody knows within that one or the next one that one of those check-in stations is the lid. And if you know anything about signal strength and direction, direction and all, um, whether if you have a beam or or if you have a uh, rotatable dipole, you know what direction it's coming from. So you can pretty much figure out who the lid is. And um, just stop being a lid. Just you know, we're pleading with you, stop being a lid. Your representation is of our our whole hobby. And, you know, we've worked hard over the years to maintain a professional um, reputation. And it's really just sickening. So, you know, we'll end on a positive note, and that's amateur radio is not only one of the best hobbies, probably the best hobby in the world, and it actually serves a purpose, and that is emergency communication in time of need, disaster, um, or um, cell phone and landlines down to be able to help out with any condition that may exist on the ground. Now, um, ham radio, sorry, it's hard to talk when that thing's going on. It, ham radio works with FEMA and Homeland Security and I mean, you gotta go through classes now and everything just to volunteer to get on and to, to help out in an ice storm or earthquake or whatnot. So 73's, I, I wish you a very good day. If you like this video, um, post it on your Facebook or po po post this video on those ham sites and get the word out. Stop being a lid. L-I-D. Lousy, interfering, dumbass is what I call them. Just, just a terrible operator. Alright, 73s.